The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Every day, citizens around the country are faced with new dilemmas. Dilemmas that affect them profoundly. Whether it's injustice, discrimination, falling through the cracks, scandal and cronyism, balances of power, ethics, religious freedoms, state versus citizens and unfunded mandates, and the list goes on and on and on. Welcome to Speak Up is directed at those who have fallen through the cracks and it gives them a voice. It's your turn to speak up, to stand up and fight back. Welcome to Speak Up. I'm Kevin Avard, your host. And today we're going to be talking to a Senate, a state Senate candidate, uh, Mr. Representative, actually, R Ralph Bohm, and I want to welcome you to the show. Ralph. Thank you. Ralph, you've been in the legislature for, for some time now. Yeah, this is my fifth term. Fifth term. And um, before that, I was doing a lot of things in town. I was, uh, for 22 years, I was a selectman, budget committee, and ended up uh, you know, on the school board. And also, part of that, I was also on the rec commission. I remember when I was a state rep, uh, it was 2010 through 12, you, know, you were sitting up uh, closer to the front in, in front of me. I don't know if it was, aisle, if it was in Section 3. Were you in Section 3? Um, yeah, right at the front row. Right up at the front row. Yeah. And I, I used to kind of envy that. I hated that seat. Oh, man, it was better than my seat. Yeah, I was in the middle, oh. and uh, I always had to walk over a whole bunch of people in order to go to the bathroom. So right. it was, it was, it was kind of yeah, difficult. I was, because I was, I was vice chair of the Education Committee. Yep. That one, so I was in the in the front row, which was terrible. That's part of leadership. I know. But, yeah, yeah. Well, but, that's that's good. That was quite the honor for you to be. Yeah. Yeah. And so you were vice chair of, of education. Education committee. Yeah. The following year, when the following term, when the Democrats, I was ranking Republic. So. So you've been there for a while. Yeah. You've seen a lot. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And you also worked on. You served on school board. I was. Yeah, I was on school board for uh, for six for two terms in, in Litchfield for six. For six years. Let's feel okay. Yeah. What what district is that? Okay, what I'm going for is Senate District 18, which is Manchester Ward five, six, seven, eight, nine, and Litchfield. And Litchfield, right? That's uh, that's a pretty good sized territory, obviously. No, yeah, it's yeah, and Litchfield is about the size of a ward in Manchester. Yeah. So you've served under uh, a, a Republican and a conservative Republican, a Democrat, and of course uh, now we have another Republican in the right. House. And uh, so you you know how legislation gets uh, right. gets through how it gets how the the sausage is made. Uh, tell me about your experience in in this legislature. What, what's uh, what? well, yeah. One of the things is too you have to. I know a lot of a lot of the reps won't work with certain people. I mean, you got to work with everybody right. across the aisle. And uh, for a good example, last term when Mary Giles, who was a Democrat, I mean, was chair of the committee. She actually put me in charge of a, a subcommittee because we, we worked good together. Uh, and uh, I even had on one bill Devon Chaffee of the ACLU write an amendment for me, which was that was the bill for student protection for um, social media, and where we had the Liberty Alliance, Cornerstone, and the ACLU all for the bill, which yeah. is unusual. That came before our committee, too, I know. yes. Yeah. And that's unusual. You don't see that. Um, but, yeah, you've got to be able to, to work with everybody. And, yeah. and, and I think that's, that's as a senator, you, you, you realize that because when, when liberty people or the, the conservatives or the, the, the moderates and, and Democrats, they're all different factions in the House, and you have to build bridges to every one of them in order to get certain legislation passed. Right. And that, that really is a, a, an art. Yeah, sometimes, yeah, you have to get something that everybody will agree with. Yeah. yeah. So this year, you know, we, we tried to pass some bills in the Senate, and uh, the one that I tried to, to get passed was this Common Core Bill, right. SB 101. And it seems to be our, our governor seems to be the poster child for, for Common Core, and uh, we wanted to give people that option be able to opt out. Right. 
I mean, that was, we tried that a few times. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember when it first came up in 2010 when they sort of snuck it in after the legislature in 2011 that they had a bill also to say no. Mm -hmm. and, and that was the, um, the Senate tabled it that time. And, uh, but yeah, we've been, we've been fighting that for ever since the legislature did it. And what, what's funny, when they came to testify, the uh, Tom Raffio of the, the Board of Ed, and, and they kept saying, well, we don't need this bill because it's not mandated. We're just saying that. So my question to him was, well, then why not? I mean, are you planning on mandating it? So why don't you have a, a law that just says what you're saying? You know, and so to me and everybody, it didn't make any sense that why are they fighting the bill when they're saying they're not mandating it anyway. Right. Yeah, well, why not give the people the option? Right. Now, you're a Republican. Yes. Yeah. And, and uh, how does your district weigh? Is it? Uh, it's, well, the district itself, which includes, no, well, Litchfield is, is Republican, mm -hmm. and the district, Woods 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, that's sort of split. I think uh, eight and nine are somewhat Republican, mm -hmm. and uh, seven isn't. Five is, um, but it's and six is also. So there's only really one one ward that very Democrat, and the others are split. Now, then the Senate seat has gone back and forth over the years. Right. Yeah. So it's it's not it's not a solid seat for any party. Right. So the, the, one of the other bills that came up, by the way, uh, was, was a, an issue that it seems as though the governor vetoed this one as well, but right. where, where people could, uh, it had to do with the polling uh, stations. Uh, right, yeah, eight, um, SB 279, what is it? Yeah, it was the bill on whether or not to uh, drive by voting. Correct. Yeah, I mean, you got to be a resident for 30 days, which... It's interesting because our Secretary of State is a Democrat. Right. And he's firmly behind this bill. And the latest poll I saw on, on TV was 58% of the people are for the bill, and a very small percentage, some people just didn't care, are, were against it. Right. So, I mean, everybody have said, and I've seen Democrats over the years and whatnot, we got to have an ID, we got to show ID. And, but for some reason, yeah. yeah, I remember in this uh, we went to vote in this last uh, election, and I was the first one there. Uh, and they asked me for my ID, and I said absolutely. And I had a right. big smile on my right. face. He's sure, we used to. Yeah. Well, the the thing is, is you know, if if people don't belong there and they're voting in your particular area, you're watering down the vote right. and you're cheating. And you you're wiping out your vote. Yeah, and you're cheating. And 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 that. My vote counts. My vote should count, and they really should. Uh, Representative uh, Eric Eastman, right? He won by six votes. Hmm. Six. Right. Um, Victoria Sullivan won by two after the recount. So, so I mean, it's each vote does count, and so if you water that down, you're 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 rigging the system. Now, why would anybody be against such a bill? Well, there was seventeen hundred. I believe it's like, like 1,700 bills that the Secretary of State did, I mean, voters, that they can't find. Right. And they, the Attorney General will not investigate. Right. And the Attorney General is appointed by uh, the, the, the governor. governor. And right. so what faith do you place in the Attorney General? Right. None on that. Well, I mean, if they're not going to enforce the law, if they're not going to investigate uh, criminal activity because it helps their party, that's not justice. Right. And, and people are not being served that way. Um, I actually would like to see a, the Attorney General to be uh, uh, accountable, more accountable to the people rather than right. just specifically to the yeah. governor. I don't, yeah, and that I wouldn't like to see him elected, but maybe appointed the same way the Secretary of State is in the Treasurer. Right, with but, the approval of the House and of the Senate. Right, the uh, and if yeah. the, And there should be uh, uh, a way of removing that person be, if, if they're not following yeah. you know, the law. Yeah. Because uh, the same day voting is. I mean, it gets to be a joke in some places. I remember even the first time I was in the legislature, I was on election law. And I was, uh, it was 05, 06, and in the 2004 election, I remember complaining about these people that were camping in a campground. Yep. Went in to vote, same day voting, then packed up and left. 
you know, what's to the, what's the prevent them from going to one place, to another oh, place, yeah. to another you, place, to another place? You can easily place. do that in New Hampshire. Right. I mean, I can vote, go to another town, find a good address and put it in. Oh, I don't have my ID and sign and they can't find me. Now at least, hopefully, they can take the picture at least. And right. we did make it a felony, but uh, and still. Identify it. Well, hopefully uh, this September 16th we'll have a veto uh, override. That. Uh, it, it all depends, but I, I, my, my suspicions are that if you're against this type of bill, then you're, for, you're favoring fraud. Right, yeah. And you're putting up a false argument that it, you're, you're, you're discriminating. No, we're protecting what, you know, every time you show an ID to a bank, I, I, are they discriminating? No, I want them to see my ID. <laughs> <laughs> that's my account. You better, right? right? right. So I, that's, that's a, an important issue. I know there was a, another gun bill, the constitutional carry. Right, that, One, 116. Yes, 116. 116. Now, that's a, another issue to be... Uh, right, and that came about from 1923, it was, when they passed this law mainly to keep immigrants and unions from having weapons, guns. And that was the whole purpose of it. And what's interesting, the current law says, you know, it's up to the police chief or, I know in our town we left it up to the selectman, not the police chief. Mm -hmm. But it says, if, if the police chief determines the person is suitable, and who what does that mean? Yeah. I mean, suitable, and that's actually in law. The police chief who's ever giving the, the license is... So if he doesn't like the color of your eyes... Right, yeah, you're not suitable. Yeah. And the thing is, what's, what's weird about this, I have to go through a background investigation to buy the gun. Right. Now, I'm, I got to wait another two weeks to carry it, unless I want to open carry, which I think is worse. Right. But also, and some cases have come up where, say, a, a woman, this, this is a, a protection of women bill, because some women, all of a sudden they see they're being stalked or something. They gotta now wait two weeks before they can carry their gun to protect themselves. Right. Yeah, you know, it doesn't make sense. It, it's interesting that, that that Vermont allows the, the the constitutional carry, and you know they have they're a socialist state. Right. It's, yeah. It, it, yeah. Do, it doesn't make sense. That's another issue that will be coming up for a veto. Yeah. The thing is on Vermont. The problem with Vermont. See, in New Hampshire, I like the way they did it because you can still get a license. Mm -hmm. The problem with Vermont, unless you go to another state where they allow it without a license, which are a few, that's the only state where you have reciprocity. <laughs> right. So at least in New Hampshire, we but the problem with New Hampshire, the closest state we have reciprocity with other than Vermont is Pennsylvania. So how do you get there? Yeah. <laughs> you know, Ralph, it, 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 it does, it, when you serve on, on a school board or you're an alderman, you, you really get a feel for what the people are, are, are talking about. You get a feel for, hey, you know, I, I served on zoning board. I was a city council myself. And when people come in and say, look, I have an issue. My, my shed is too close to the property line. Or, or this material that's going to the school is offensive and it doesn't work for the kids. You've been in the, tren in the trenches. Right. You, you know what the common people talk right. about. You know, the, the, what's concerned citizens deal with on a regular basis. You're looking at them in the eye to eye. Uh, we had some instances where I was on the school board with offensive material. Mm -hmm. And we got raked over the coals on, 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 for doing some stuff on the school board. There was one book, short story, that was in a textbook mm -hmm. that I brought it up to the, to the state house and had people on the education committee look at it. I'm doing both. And that's not suitable at all. Right. The only way you could have that movie, that book could have been made in the movie. It would have been X-rated. I mean, it, it, the, it, the language was terrible. What we're doing was terrible. And so we banned it, and we got raked over the coals for book burning. No, no, it just wasn't suitable. Right. And, 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 and you're really the gatekeepers. Obviously, right. when, when you're on a school board, you're there to make sure that the kids are educated, that they're not... Um, spoiled in, in certain ways. There's some things that are not age appropriate. Right. That's why we have the, the rating. And that's, that's a lesson that you can bring to the Senate as well. Now, you're not an attorney, are you? No. Okay. No, no I was a, uh, I'm a retired computer software engineer. Okay. The only reason I say is, you know, we, we've got plenty of attorneys up there. We need, I know. We need I know. some average somebody folks. With, somebody with them um, look out of the box type thing. Right. Yeah, you know. It's, uh, which was interesting, I was also a former member of the Home Education Advisory Committee, yeah. and uh, we passed some bills.
to fix some of the problem that was going on there, including one big one was uh, the House House rep, two House reps, and there was a Senate rep on the committee, made them non-voting members because there were six, there were 12 people on that, not counting the, the reps in Senate. And so there were six representing the home education people and six administration. So depending on the politics involved, you don't want the other three siding with either side. Mm. Yeah, and so that's when we fix that. But uh, and also, uh, up to now, I guess uh, August this year, I was also on the New England Board of Higher Ed. So you, you're, you're active in a lot of different areas. Right. You know, a lot of people are really concerned about, um, about jobs, about uh, you know, our economy right. here in New Hampshire. Recently in the Senate, we passed uh, you know, a budget which made a very modest redu reduction in the business enterprise tax and business profit tax. And uh, Senator Little actually brought in a bill which uh, revamped the entire um, uh, securities you know, laws so that it brings it up to date so that you know, venture capitalists can come in. Right. People, you voted for those. Right. Yeah, it, it's interesting on, on the budget. It's, we have the highest business taxes in New England and probably the fifth high, I mean, in the, in the country. Mm -hmm. And we need to lower those business taxes to keep the well-trained people, young people in the state. We're getting to be an old state because there aren't jobs for the high-skilled high people, even though the community college system is great in New Hampshire where they actually get businesses and they train for the areas where, where right. they're needed. But we need the businesses to come, and they're not going to come in the, if they have to pay the high taxes, along with high energy rates, too. Right. Well, we just heard that the um, uh, Northern Pass, they're actually going to be burying... 60 miles of it. At least 60 miles, which is a, a, quite a compromise for them. Right. Uh, but they got to lower the amount of electricity, is what I've heard, too. So is that a good or bad? Yeah. And then my argument on that is I have Quebec Hydro. Quebec Hydro lines now are running through Bedford. They're running through Litchfield. They're running through Londonderry. I mean, so the people up north don't want, after a while you don't even see them. Mm -hmm. you know, but yeah, maybe. And, they can't, and I can see they can't run them where the existing lines are running because then you have a single point of, right. of a problem. So yeah, I can see them where they need it. But I guess, yeah, and then up in the north, how can you, is it that, I mean, that easy to bury? through granite? <laughs> I'm not sure. There'll probably have to be some blasting. And I know I we're know. having uh, issues with the pipeline yeah. uh, coming through my district, which, which is controversial because the pipeline is supposed to, uh, in, in some people's minds, it's going to help with our energy costs. But we're yeah. not really sure that that's going to happen. They're, they're actually going to be replacing 50% with existing uh, lines. But it's the private property issue that's right. really troubling. Right. Me. They have to go, yeah. The problem, yeah, we need. More than, what is it, 55 percent of uh, electricity is in New Hampshire is being generated by natural gas. Mm -hmm. So that being, that being said, though, it, it, uh, it, that pipeline could have gone straight from Massachusetts and done the same thing. Right. And we would have still benefited, if, yeah. if at all. Yeah. So in my district, you know, they're saying, hey, look, enough. You're not going to go over the, do a zigzag through our district just so that one company can profit. Right. And right. Uh, it's, it's not... Yeah. They're taking. They're going to use the eminent domain issue, and uh, it's not going to benefit everybody. No. You can't. We, I thought we passed that law some years ago on eminent domain, where it uh, you can't. You can only take private. You can't take private property for eminent domain for a company that's making. It's got to be. Right. Well, that's yeah. that's in question, and we, yeah. we're uh, we're. I think in my district we're, we're trying to fight that, but. The, the problem, the underlying problem is, is that we're part of a grid and, and we have an energy cost and we actually export energy and we got to kind of rethink this whole thing. Well, what happened two winters ago, I'm surprised it didn't happen last winter, was when PSNH had a fire up their jet engine yep. plant in Merrimack and a coal firing plant someplace else because the, weather, the natural gas lines in the state were mainly, they're for residential and commercial. So there's only so much volume. Right. So yeah, they need to be wide now. I hear that's one case where Spectra they're actually going, they're going to make the pipes bigger. So yeah, I mean, Spectra has one that's going through that can, uh, without any kind of environmental impact, uh, and they can augment what they're what they're doing. Right. So, uh, energy costs are, are are a concern with people. Obviously, uh, you know, people are really concerned about the workers' comp. 
You right. know, we, yeah. uh, Senator Daniels had an idea, and uh, it, uh, it almost passed the Senate. It's been tabled. But there's, there's, a, there's a need to lower some of our, our, uh, our workers' comp to attract new business into our right. state. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, and I know that he'd been on labor when he was in the house, so he knows knows that. Yeah. So yeah, so he he's the one to look at for that. So he know, knows that stuff. Um, so yeah, it's. Uh, what are some of the other issues that would be uh, that that are at the top of your list? That, now you how Senator, uh, I believe her name is Susie. Susie, Donna yeah. Susie. Yeah. Actually, I do know her name. <laughs> uh, you'll be running against her. Right. And, and on my website, I actually have comparison with bills that she voted for, for or against that I would have done the opposite. Right. And one interesting one was SB 204, which she sponsored, which was to repeal the education tax credit. Ooh. And you know what that bill does? That allows companies to take a de deduction just like you and tax I can. Credit, right? A tax credit, just like you and I can from our... I tax form, say I gave this much money to charity mm -hmm. because that is a 501c charity they can donate to and then take the deduction. And that money then gives um, scholarships to needy, underprivileged. underprivileged students so they also yeah. can go to private schools. You know, it, it's the argument years ago, and I've heard this, and I just it's so salacious because years ago they were talking about vouchers and somehow it's vouchers. It's not a voucher, and they keep calling it that. Uh, exactly. But one – they. They were saying, well, the voucher system, if we had the voucher system, it would allow all these rich people to go to the private schools. Well, hang on, folks. The rich kids are already going to the private right. schools. It's in, in, in middle, high and middle income. How about letting the kids that are in poverty, right. you know, have a choice? Mm -hmm. And that's what that, that Network for Education Opportunity right. does. It creates a system where somebody like BAE or... Any industry out there, if you're a corporation, or in private individuals too can also can donate, donate to this. They get a tax credit, and they allow that money to go to to kids that are in need to get a scholarship to go to a school of their choice. Right, a which could school. be another. It could also be another public school in another be. town. Right, it could allow for the transportation. It could be. Right. A, it could right. go for a private school um, that meets their needs because right. for some reason there's this there's this push to put everybody in a cookie cutter. Right. And you, this is the system, and we know it's best for you, and choice is, is not necessarily a good thing in their minds. We believe choice right. serves the best interest of the child. Yes, and same with uh, charter schools. Good example of one of the best uh, high schools in the state is the Academy of Science and Design in, in Nashua. Mm -hmm. I mean, that got, and also if you ever visit that, it's probably one of the most diverse schools in the state. I mean, and... And it's mainly a STEM education, and they go from, I think, fifth grade up, and the kids are tremendous. They flourish because it does, it's designed toward, towards their needs. It's interesting because when, when you put everybody in the same situation, the kids that, that don't function well don't function well. There are four charter schools in Manchester, and which interesting, Donna Susie voted against two bills to help those schools. And... One is the new one's Founders Academy. It's actually being run by the same people who do Academy of Science and Design, mm -hmm. and it's a traditional education. There's uh, another one, um, MC Squared, is called Man uh, Manchester Community College and uh, Community Charter School, and they they have a good portion percentage of the students that are through the court system, that would never make it through the regular public school, especially big Manchester public schools. Right. There's a, um, Polaris is another, another charter school, and then Mill Falls, I believe, is a Montessori type charter school. So there's four of them in Manchester that are serving the needs for kids that maybe not, might not need the fully structured public school education where they can't walk around. Because I know some cases where kids that are, are have problems where they can't sit and, have, and they're forced and you can't do it, that they let the kids roam. Roam. Yeah. And the kids are learning while they're roaming. Yeah? It's, it's, so it's, people learn differently and right. that, that needs to be explored and they, yeah. they need that option. And of course, our public schools are great, but they, they, you know, they don't fit everybody's no. needs. And so you need That's to have that release where others can, yeah. can learn in a different environment. And 
I, I strongly would encourage that. Uh, you voted for the uh, the increase for the charter schools as well, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yes. Yes. I'm, I've been doing that for years. Yeah. And I was also one of the co-sponsors of that bill. What, 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 that was um, 50, uh, was it 503? I don't remember. Or three, three. There's so many. Then, then there was the the other one, which was was a no-brainer, which I'm surprised you voted against, was to. Most charter schools are renting space or leasing space. Yes. And a and a, and a uh, so why does the company that's leasing the space have to pay the property taxes on that portion that the charter schools? If it was a regular public school, they wouldn't. Yeah, you know, public schools don't pay property taxes, so why are charter schools have to pay property taxes? It's almost taxes? like double dipping. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, so yeah. I remember that when they came to our, our yeah, committee as well. Common sense. I'm going. Why is anybody against this? Yeah. That did pass. <laughs> yeah, it did pass. It did pass. And, and Donald was one of only two votes. And, and my thing is follow the money. Mm -hmm. Okay? We know, for example, the uh, teachers' union, NEA, is against the charter schools because the teachers do not belong to the union, which they can if they wanted to. Mm -hmm. You know, they can. But they have that option. They have that option. Yeah. But she, took, she got like $9,000 from the NEA. That's not sort of like following the money. Also on that, another issue on following the money is, and I wrote a uh, um, letter to the editor from a local paper last week, it was in there about, is it ethical? Is it ethical for a, a company or an organization to accept public funds and then have a PAC set up so they can donate money to people's campaign contributions. Does Planned Parenthood do that? Yes. Look at they have a Pan Planned Parenthood PAC. And you can go on the Secretary of State's website and see who they spent money for. And now, now Planned to me, Planned Parenthood, I think, uh, I, I, if, I, if my numbers are correct, it, it's either $100,000 or $500,000. You have that kind of money that they're funneling into the state. Now, that's. That's your taxpayer money going to an organization. I don't agree with Planned Parenthood. I don't believe in that we should be selling baby parts or allowing them right. to sell baby parts right. uh, in, in the black market. And I don't even think what, people should have a question of that. Right. But the fact that your, your tax dollars go to that, that organization to, to go to another candidate that will vote against your interests well, there seems are, unconscionable. Right, their argument is, no, it's not the tax money is doing it. We have a PAC set up, people give donations. I mean, you can't separate the two. Right. And to me, wouldn't it also be a conflict of interest for somebody then to vote for that funding if they're receiving money from the organization? Have you received money from the Koch brothers? No. Okay. So they, <laughs> the reason I bring up the Koch brothers is because that seems to be their favorite darling to hate on, right. on, on the left. I, I'm glad you brought that up. Because you see the ads running against Kelly Ayotte. Yeah. At the Koch brothers, the Koch brothers. The, and it's run by the Senate Majority Pack, which is Harry Reid's organization, who blames the Koch brothers for everything. Yet, in the 2014 election, the Senate Majority Pack spent $12 million for Democrats. The Koch brothers only spent 10. So the Senate Majority Pack is spending more money for the Koch brothers. Than the Coke button. Well, just think about all the money Hillary Clinton's getting. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. Okay, from for, for that their trust that they have their uh, uh, foundation. Their, their their foundation. Yeah. Now they're getting some from Saudi Arabia. They're getting right. from all these other organizations. China, blah blah blah. Right. And these are these these places aren't really friendly towards women. No. No. Not to, that's what amazes me with. With all this, well, we got to do this and whatnot. Wait a minute. These organizations hate women. They hate gays. They, I mean, they hate Christians. And Christians. Or anybody that disagrees <laughs> with their, their lifestyle. They're not open-minded. But she can take money from them. Is she going to be beholden to them? Of course she is. But why, why are the Koch brothers so uh, demonized, and yet it's okay for the Clintons? And now here's a, here's a, a really weird thought. Did you know that one, one of the Koch brothers, or both of them, are actually pro-choice. They're, they're more libertarian. I didn't know that. No. I actually saw it on. Right. I saw it on public uh, 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 public broadcasting, right. which they also fund. Right. Oh, know, yeah. Public television. Right. They, yeah, they fund. Well, here's the good. The 2014 election. Different organizations donated a total of 
$429 million for Democrats, okay? Out of those 50 organizations, the total was only $97 million for Republicans. So here we have Harry Reid with the Senate Majority Pack claiming the Koch brothers, the Koch brothers, the Koch brothers, not necessarily saying what all the unions are donating to and everybody else. And even MSNBC, which is, we know what that network is, did have a, a thing they did on one of their news shows where they're saying, hey, who's the top five people? And everybody said, no, no not the Koch. Who's? And they're way down to number 14. <laughs> right. And top five were it's, all you know, it's it's just it's funny. Just, the hypocrisy is yeah. is is, yeah. is laughable. But uh, the general public needs to understand that you know people like you, you you you're, you're just average Joe guy. Uh, you've lived in the community. You served in the community, and you can bring that to the Senate. And the reason I asked you if you're an attorney, not that I I, I don't like attorneys, it's just that the attorneys, if you're an attorney, you are a member of the court right. and your loyalty belongs to the court mm. and when the court and the client or the court and the public are in conflict your loyalties as a bar member belong to mm. the court mm. that's a problem right you're not a member and therefore you're a member your loyalty belongs to my constituents the, the constituents and right. the people that's what I say. I mean, I vote for, I mean, I've always taken that stand of, uh, yeah, I get high scores with the HRA and, and other. The House Republican. House Republican lines. Yeah, I got a 99 this year. Last year, I got a 99 and 100. I'm, I'm, I'm on the, uh, the Republican Liberty Alliance on their five-year honor roll. You know, I don't agree with them all the time, but. I mean, is uh, but uh, and I never even look at their gold sheet when I vote, <laughs> yeah. which is funny because, but that's what my constituency wants me to vote that way, uh, and I've even told people I said, you know, I vote what, what my constituents want, what's good for my constituents, what's good for the state, and then the party. Right. I mean, I'm not, yeah. Yeah, and you know, it, it's it's interesting because you you'll hear from both sides, won't you? You'll hear from Democrats, you'll hear from right. Republicans. And libertarians, and, and you got a lot of people out there saying, "Look, I'm, I'm nothing anymore," you know, and and they have legitimate concerns why they're not either a Democrat or why they're not a Republican, just because nobody's listening to them, right. you know. Yeah. And and uh, when you serve on those those boards, that's all you do is listen, oh, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, people come in, they they're screaming and they they they're yelling at you, or they're yelling at their neighbor, and you got to listen. Right and and, uh, and and everybody's concerns are reality, especially in their own mind. So it, we're there to help. So I appreciate you coming on the show. Oh, are there any you. final thoughts? How do people get in touch with you? Well, I have, a, I have a website, mm -hmm. also on Facebook, but our website is uh, rgbohm, mm -hmm. B-O-E-H-M, for the number four, nhsenate.com. Okay. And there's a place there where they can ask me a question. They can fill out the thing, ask me a question. Also on Facebook, which uh, R.G. Bohm for New Hampshire Senate. Well, if they look at my name, they can, Ralph Bohm, they'll find my, web, my Facebook. But, uh, and they point to the, uh, my website, which I'm still working on, but I keep changing it, so come back every now and then yep. and people look at it. And uh, I'm also on that, I have a page actually showing a comparison with uh, these bills that Donna Susie voted for. Also, I have buttons that people can push to look at my voting record versus, versus Donna Susie's voting record. Right. Yeah. So, so uh, there's, there's a little uh, contrast and uh, there's a reason that you're running. Right. And yeah. also uh, my, the TV shows I've done and the radio shows have the button there and this one I'll have a button there for people to, right. to press so they can watch it. Do you have any events coming up that, that you're going to be at that you can no, talk to people? No, or? no I haven't. Nothing I mean, yet. It's a, Right now, well, in Nashua, too, and you know, in Manchester, they're doing their local. Right, the mayor's races. Mayor's, mayor's races. Yep. And so I'm, I'm working with people up in Manchester. I mean, uh, I got most, most of the reps, that are the Republican reps behind me. Uh, also, I'm working for, with people on their, to also help them on their school board races, school committee races, because of, hey, we, need, uh, we need somebody on the school committees to come and testify and not... Yeah. Right. Because on the on the, um, the the Common Core bills, I mean, 
here we have all these people come in and testify that are, don't, aren't being paid to be there. You know, it's parents and students and even teachers, yet everybody for it is being paid to be there. Right. Superintendents. With and, your tax dollars. Yes. Yeah, so but, they're being paid to be there. And, you know, it's... It, it, it's not an even fight. No. And, and so you, we need more people to come to the table and, and, and make sure that, that they're heard. Uh, hey, on the side, before we close our show, this big presidential thing going on. Are you involved in anybody's campaign? Yeah, I am. Yeah. You don't have to say it here on, no. on, on today's show. So how, what do you, how do you make of it? Have you ever seen anything like this before? No, I mean, I got one issue with one candidate that... I mean, who, what's he going to do if he wins? <laughs> well, I know that's not Carly, so. No. No, meaning that it's, it's a he, so. Right, yeah. What's but, he going to do when he wins? Because, I mean, here's somebody that says he likes Hillary. He campaigned for her. And, what, I mean, and then maybe he'll even run as an independent. My argument, well, wait a minute. That just makes guarantee that Hillary will win yeah. if she's the candidate. There's yeah. some issue maybe she won't be. But, uh so, me, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a good, there are a lot of good people running. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, and I mean, I like, uh, I like even Carly Fiorina, even though that's not who I'm bagging at, because she's, she, she's a pit bull. She knows how to throw a punch yeah. and, and take one yeah. at the same time. Yeah. You, know, uh, you know, when I used to knock doors in, in, in the previous campaign, one of the things that uh, really surprised me back then, even on a local level, people were really concerned about our borders. Oh, yes, yes, we have to do something. The borders have to be closed. I mean, before we even do anything else, mm -hmm. before we figure out how we get rid of the um, E-Verify. I mean, some people, libertarians type, that are against E-Verify. I'm going, why? Mm -hmm. I mean, you're saying you're against the illegal immigration, yet you don't want the government looking to make sure, well, it could mess up. But wait a minute. I mean, you can have some kind of Isn't that check. the role of the government right. to mess up? Yeah. I'm just but I mean, hey, if, and then you find companies that are hiring people illegally. Mm -hmm. I mean, then they won't. Then you won't have the illegal immigration. I, I look at the Department of Bureaucracy, and that seems oh, yes. like all oh, yeah. they're doing is messing up, and yeah. we don't see anything improving, whether it's the, the VA, you know, our border security. Oh, the VA. To me, the VA, all they need to do is close it. I mean, my thing is keep some of the hospitals open, but normally give veterans especially, say, the ones that are retired, pay for their Medicare supplemental. It would be cheaper than running the VA. Right. Yeah. I, you're not the first person I heard say that. You know, just give them a card and let them go to, the, to where, the, where they're, they choose. Right. And it, why, why turn it into a bureaucracy that, right. that's just not working? And the problem with, you no, know, with the federal government, you can't fire anybody. Right. And that's one of the issues there. Yeah, and, and again, nobody's been really hung out to dry because of all the scandals that have been going on. Right. So, yeah, it's an interesting time so that, that we live in. Yeah. And, uh, well, we appreciate you running for, for Senate. And uh, you, you have a good temperament. And that's, that's good. One thing I've known you, on, even on the short term, you're very even keeled. Right. You don't go off the deep end. No, and uh, you can work with anybody. Right, yeah. That's, that's, why, that's why I say I'm, I look at it this way. Um, I have the best record of anybody that's running. Mm -hmm. I even her, Donna Susie, because I mean I perfect attendance for the last three years. Yeah, and I missed a couple of terms ago. I missed them because we had our school board. I was on the school board also and the rep. And when they changed the uh, session to be Wednesdays, rather, and our school board meets on Wednesdays. <laughs> so, wait a minute. So yeah. I had to leave early sometime. Yeah. But yeah, you know, for the last three years, and even the National Telegraph had commented on that. Well, your colleagues highly respect you, and I do as well. And uh, uh, you're you're one of us. You know, you're you're one of the, the good people that are that are steady, and uh, you don't go off the deep end, and uh, you can be counted on. And that's that's really uh, really critical in in, uh, in leadership. So, Ralph, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. Me. All right, and thank you for watching. Speak up if you want to get involved with Ralph's campaign. Please contact him. Uh, he talked about his website on on the show. Uh, if you want to run for office, a school board, or something like that, and you want to talk on, on this show, come on. We'll, we'll, we'll let you talk. Uh, until next week, thanks for watching Speak Up. We'll see you. Thank you for watching Speak Up. And we want to thank our sponsor, Aardvark Cleaning. If you have a carpet job, call Aardvark. They're the best in town. And if you have a story and you want to be heard, contact me 
Kevin Avard at speakupnh at gmail.com. That's speakupnh gmail.com. We'll get your voice heard. Thanks for watching. Until next week. The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.